Good day, folks. Everything new under the sun. We talk about the, or going to talk about rather, the six thousand years of man, and an important uh, uh, thing to understand is, did the ter- church fathers believe in a literal uh, six day creation and six thousand years of man? Uh, and uh, if so, what exactly did they believe about that? Why is it important? Well, we've got these timelines. This happens to be Ken Hovind's uh, "What on Earth Is About to Happen" in his timeline there. And it displays uh, the history since creation up till now, um, and even uh, through the day of the Lord or the millennial reign of Christ and on the purple there the, at the right side. And this is key because I think God uh, works in patterns. I think history uh, runs in patterns, and I think the Bible lays out a very good uh, indication that indeed uh, we are here for about 6,000 years. Uh, Well, actually, I shouldn't say it, but we're here for exactly 6,000 years because God is a very precise and accurate God. And and even if we don't have our calendars correct, God's timeline is 100% correct. So we have this idea of there's six days of creation, and then on the seventh day, God rested, or the Sabbath. Um, And uh, in the Bible, it says a thousand days is like a a a thousand uh, years is like a day, and a day is like a thousand years to the Lord. And so we glean from that and uh, numerous other scriptures. Um, that uh, we will be here for about 6,000 years. That's the the time of man. And it's been about uh, 2,000 years from the death of uh, Jesus on the cross. He died and rose again. He paid for my sin and your sin, and he's coming back soon to deal with the sin in the world. And from Jesus to creation was about 4,000 years. And so you put that together, we're about at the 6,000-year mark. Now, the year is 2022. But that's because the Gregorian calendar is not accurate. Uh, Remember, this this is working on God's calendar and on his timeline. And what our timeline is may uh, doesn't make sense necessarily. Everybody thought the year 2000 was the end of 6,000 years of man and the Lord would return. But that has proved not to be true. Now, I believe the uh, end of 6,000 years ends in about uh, the year 2028 because you look go 2,000 years from the uh, death of Jesus Christ, which is the milestone event, that would put it at the year 2028 uh, because uh, scholars believe he was born not on... Um, uh, you know, Gregorian Z, uh, year one. In fact, uh, three or four uh, years before Christ, or BC, three or four years before um, that, the Gregorian actually started. Um, so there's there's errors in our calendar system. So if six thousand years of man is correct, uh, then uh, the church fathers would have believed that and taught it too. Is that a modern idea, or is that something that has been uh, taught in the past? So let's take a look at that. So again, with the idea, and this is uh, part of my, my slideshow, um, you know, uh, year zero or year one, if you will, uh, creation to the end or 6,000 year end uh, or on our calendar or around the year 2028 is what I figure. That's what Kent Hovind figures as well with his chart. Um, one um, a proof of it is Exodus uh, uh, 20, which says, uh, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And this refers to the millennial reign of Christ. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So six days, or six thousand years, a day of the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. Uh, it says, uh, uh, going on, verse 11, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. So the literal six days of creation is spelled out in Exodus 20. Confirmed. And of course it says that in Genesis as well. And rested the seventh day, or the millennial reign of Christ, a thousand years like a day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So just one example uh, of where that comes from. So let's take a look at um, the this particular uh, Kindle or ebook by um, Ken Johnson. And this is a book I, I've showed before on uh, the channel. And I think it's very interesting. And it does speak about the church fathers. And indeed, um, the name of it, I wonder if we can go to, uh, let's just go to the beginning. I'll show you the title screen here if we can uh, get to it before this thing uh, crashes here. Uh, Let's see. Go back, 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 back through the introduction, through the table of contents. Very interesting book, by the way. Um, So here it is. End Times by... The Church Fathers uh, by Ken Johnson. It says Ken Johnson at the bottom. So that, that's what I'm looking at. Ebook, and I'm, I'm just reading on Amazon uh, um, uh, Kindle Reader. But you can uh, you can uh, pay for it, download it onto your tablet. 
uh, or uh, actually download the hard copy as well. So I'm, I'm looking here the 6,000 years and you know along with the the subject of this uh, you know this video is we're, we're going to take a look at what the church fathers believed about the 6,000 years or or the history of man rather do they believe in 6,000 years. So the idea that Jesus and reading from it here that will, Jesus will return and set up his millennial kingdom in the Jewish year 6,000 is taught by several several ancient church fathers. The first coming of Jesus Christ was about 4,000 years after creation. That's the timeline we looked at. Uh, let's see. That's the timeline here. So uh, prior to the death of Jesus was about 4,000 years. And after Jesus' uh, death on the cross is about 2,000 years to where we are now. Uh, it says, these ancient church fathers taught the second coming would be about A.D. 2000. So again, looking at AD 2000 after uh, the uh, death of Jesus, uh, that's about where we are. It says where, you can see on the bottom right-hand corner where it says today. The most descriptive is in the epistle of Barnabas, which devotes an entire chapter on this issue. Remember, this does not mean that they were correct, but if they believed and taught this, it proves the ancient Christians were pre-millennial. Here are a few quotes on, the, quotes on the issue. With the calendars being confused and inaccurate, we can't say for certain when the year 6000 will occur. This is Ken Johnson speaking, obviously. An approximate range would be uh, between the years AD 230 and 2067. So again, I said 2028. That's uh, based on 2000 years from the death of Christ, which we approximate at uh, year 28 on the Gregorian calendar. Um, but it may be different. And Ken Johnson has a slightly different idea. He thinks it comes a little later, uh, but we'll see. So getting back uh, to this. So uh, Barnabas is the first one. Now, Barnabas, I think I'm going to have to uh, uh, move this up here. Safari, that's what I want. Barnabas. Therefore, children, in six days or in 6,000 years, all the prophecies will be fulfilled. Then it says, he rested on the seventh day. This signifies that the second coming of our Lord Jesus, uh, he will destroy the Antichrist, judge the ungodly, and change the sun, moon, and stars. Then he will truly rest during the millennial reign, which is the seventh day. So this idea of six days of man, seventh day rest, 6,000 years of man, seventh, uh, seventh year, uh, which is the Sabbath or the millennial reign of Christ. Now, this Barnabas guy was from the epistle of Barnabas. And, of course, uh, this comes from the Apocrypha uh, in uh, the Catholic Bible. Very interesting reading. Uh, lots of books in the Apocrypha. <clears throat> uh, very interesting reading. I, I definitely suggest you go and check out um, the Apocrypha, uh, uh, I, which, you know, it should be must-reading. Uh, um, um, absolute, uh, you know, you, you should go read it uh, for any Christian after you're done reading the canon of Scripture, of course. Uh, but that's where the, the Epistle of Barnabas comes from, uh, the Apocrypha. Now, Arrhenius. Now, we spoke of Arrhenius uh, before. The day of the Lord is as a thousand years, and, and in six days created things uh, were completed. It is evident, therefore, that, we, that they will come to an end in the six thousandth year. And that's in his book, Against Heresies, or writing uh, 528. Uh, so... Arrhenius, again, we, we spoke of him. Um, AD 180 is when he was around in writing. Hippolytus, this is another guy that I've spoken of on channel. The Sabbath is a type of future kingdom. Uh, for a day with the Lord is a thousand years. Since then, in six days the Lord created all things, it follows that in six thousand years all will be fulfilled. So again, confirming this idea that these early church fathers, all in you know similar periods, uh, Commodi uh, Commodianus uh, is AD 240, so similar time ranges there. Uh, they all believed uh, 6,000 years of man on earth, or natural years of man. Commodianus, AD 240, we will be immortal when the 6,000 years are completed. And that's out of, against the gods of the heathens, 35. All right, let's look at a, a couple more here. Um... Resurrection, and this is uh, Hippolytus speaking still, resurrection of the body will be when 6,000 years are completed. So he uh, believes at the very end, which, which I would agree with. And after the 1,000 years millennial reign, the world will come to an end. Uh, Victorinus. Uh, now this, this guy, uh, this is from Wikipedia. St. Victorius of Petau was an early Christian uh, ecclesiastical writer who flourished about 
270, and who was martyred during the persecutions of Emperor uh, uh, Diocletian, Diocletian rather, the Bishop of Petovio, modern uh, Petuv in Slovenia, Victorianus, also known as uh, Victorinus uh, Pedavianensis, uh, Nensis, rather. Uh, I won't read the other name, but anyways, uh, you can go find Wikipedia about who this uh, particular church uh, father is. And uh, Commodianus, uh, he uh, this is a he was a Christian poet, uh, the date of whose birth is uncertain, but generally placed at about the middle of the third century or between the end of Diocletian's persecution and issuing of the Edict of uh, Maxentius 305 to 11. It has uh, lately been inserted, however, that uh, uh, Commodianus lived under Julian or even in the middle of the fifth century. So you can you can look up information on these guys. This is you know these are well known um, uh, people in history and uh, known as uh, Christian church fathers, early Christians, uh, what have you. There, uh, Victorinus, Satan will be bound until the thousand years are finished. That is after the sixth day. So he believes there's a, a literal millennial reign of Christ, a thousand years. Um, and he is bound during that period, and that's going to be after the sixth day. So you have to suggest that he doesn't believe in six days and then a 1,000-year period, but that 6,000 years of man uh, is uh, is implied there. Methodius. Now, this Methodius guy, I, I didn't find a lot of information on him. Little is known, says this page, about the life of Methodius, of whom Eusebius says nothing. According to Jerome, Methodius was a bishop, first of Olympus in uh, Lycia, 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 then Tyre, and died a martyr of Calchas in Greece at the end of the last persecution. The same writer says that others dated Methodius' death to the persecutions of Decius or Valerius, but the possi possibility seems excluded by the fact that Jerome cites a work of Methodius against uh, Porphyry, which can only have been written after 270, it says there, um, for the date there. So again, you can you can check that out and uh, read more about uh, Methodius. But Methodius says, In the seventh millennium, we will be immortal and truly celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. So it's this idea of, you know, a thousand years, a millennium, uh, multiple thousands of years of history on earth. And of course, they're living at a time when there is already thousands of years of history of man. Um, so it can't mean six days. That would make no sense because six days are well past. So based on the scriptures and uh, in the conclusion of where they're at in the history of uh, man, you have to assume that 6,000 years of man is kind of the next jump based on uh, verses and uh, based on the timeline uh, that is set before us. Uh, would it be 60,000 years or 600,000 years? Well, there's no verses that uh, uh, lead us to believe that would be the case. And certainly the situation of the world as it stands right now would suggest that this world is not going to be around for 60,000 years. <laughs> 6,000 years is enough uh, for a man to um, make enough trouble and for the Lord to re uh, draw a line in the sand. And again, you, you line it up with the scriptures in, in Psalms and, and such, which uh, uh, reflect that a day to the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. Uh, well, that seems to indicate there's some ratio or equation or calculation there of uh, in uh, relation to the six days of man and the seventh uh, Sabbath day uh, of creation. Lactantius. This is Wikipedia again. Uh, Lactantius was an early Christian author who became an advisor to the Roman Emperor Constantine, guiding his Christian religious policy in its initial stages of emergence, and a tutor to his son Crispus. His most important work uh, is the Institutions Divinae, an apologetic treatise intended to establish the reasonableness and truth of Christianity two pagan critics. So again, lots of history on these church fathers. You can read all about it. They've written a lot more things, but we're kind of just taking a look at very specific things that they believed as a group of Christian uh, Christians and church fathers uh, through the years and not just say the last, last 200 years, last 300 or 500 years for that matter. Um, uh, but uh, much uh, through the ages, um, they seem to all come to agreement. And he says, the 6,000th year is not yet complete. When the number is complete, the consummation must take place. And that's from Divine Institutes. So again, uh, someone with the understanding that there is 
six thousand years of man or multiple thousands of years of uh, man and then the sabbath and again drawing it back to six days of creation and the sabbath rest or the seventh day so that's what i want to to follow uh through and just give you a quick overview of that uh, from uh, ken johnson's the end times by the ancient church fathers it's important to see where these uh, folks stood on the subject and to understand um, that it's not a novel or new idea that there is 6,000 years. And we have these timelines. And again, this is not a new, you know, 20th century, 21st century, whatever idea that there are 6,000 years of man and, th and that there exists a timeline. Indeed, they believed it and they have, may, may have had their own timelines. Um, but they all seem to agree that we're getting close to the year 6,000. And it's somewhere in the near future. Uh, you know, within the next 50 years, even by uh, what Ken Johnson understands and believes by his uh, reading uh, of the uh, Church Fathers and Scriptures. So uh, we're in that era. We're in that zone. We're very close to the return of the Lord. And uh, as we get closer, these timelines are going to get more and more clear. None of us has it locked down in terms of when the exact date and time is. And that's for a purpose and a reason. I believe uh, uh, the rapture is going to uh, going to happen on the festival of Rosh Hashanah. And uh, you would say, well, you're setting a date and time. No, because Rosh Hashanah traditionally is the uh, festival where no man knows the day or the hour. That's how it's traditionally known. Because two witnesses have to uh, spot the sliver of the new moon, which kicks off that festival. And they don't know when, when it's going to occur. It could happen over a 48-hour period or two-day period. Uh, and, and so it's the festival, like I say, known by them traditionally as the, as the festival or um, uh, uh, where no man knows the day or the hour. So isn't that just the description of uh, the rapture of the church? No man knows the day or the hour. Incredible stuff. Um, and that's something I've looked into, but you can certainly Google that. No man knows the day or the hour. Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets. And so this fall period... Uh, that happens every year in, in Israel, and that's why it's always a high watch period for the rapture, because Rosh Hashanah comes up in the September-October time frame. All right, I'll leave there, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it interesting as we uh, study the ancient church fathers and what they believed. And uh, it gives us an indication, you know, as to are we on the right track with the Bible and with eschatology, our 20th century and 21st century scholars and uh, uh, eschatology buffs are they on the right track are they agreeing with with what christians believed um 500 a thousand years uh and earlier um it seems like uh, there is a lot of agreement there so that 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 could mean we're on the same the right track we're certainly on the same track in a lot of these ideas thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video